You know, one of the cool things about being on a cross-country indoor and outdoor track team for eight years in high school and college is that I probably had a little over 300 teammates over those eight years. And do you know how many of them ever came down with overtraining syndrome? One. And in this video, I want to talk about why you probably don't have overtraining syndrome and we probably are feeling instead. So first, let's be clear. Overtraining syndrome is a medical condition. It's very different than you feeling tired or sore or just normal fatigue from training. If you're training really hard right now, part of that is part of the process. It's normal. You should be feeling some level of fatigue or soreness because if you didn't, it would mean that you're not stressing your body enough for the adaptations that are going to help you get stronger, get faster, and gain more endurance. We want to differentiate between normal training fatigue and overtraining syndrome. And the last word of that phrase is really important. This is a syndrome because this is a medical condition. And if you truly do have overtraining syndrome, you should go see a doctor. Now, there are a couple different stages to overtraining syndrome. So let's go over each one of those so you can figure out where you're at if you might have overtraining syndrome. So if you have the most mild form of overtraining syndrome, it's actually not that different from normal aches and pains and fatigue and soreness that you're going to experience whenever you're training really hard. So this might feel like a little bit of sleeplessness. It might feel like some muscle angst, a little bit of anxiety. You might get sick slightly more often because your immune system is a little bit more compromised. This is the easiest form of overtraining syndrome to treat because it typically doesn't really take a dramatic reduction in your workload. So we'll, we're gonna talk more about what to do with overtraining syndrome soon, but stage one of overtraining syndrome is just normal fatigue taken up a little bit of a level. Two is where things start to get a little bit more serious. Stage two is where you might have more insomnia. So this isn't just a little bit of sleeplessness, you might have legitimate insomnia. You're also gonna find that your heart rate is legitimately raised when you're just doing normal things. And that's everything from walking up a flight of stairs to even just going on an easy run. You're gonna find that your heart rate is much higher than it normally is when you're doing these kinds of normal things. You might also have higher blood pressure, although this is something that we don't typically track. So you probably don't know if your blood pressure is a little bit higher we can use our heart rate as a proxy for this one. Now, stage three overtraining syndrome is where these symptoms keep getting worse and worse. So you're gonna start feeling serious fatigue to the point where you don't really wanna do much of anything. And that's the other symptom, lack of motivation. Your drive to train, to work hard, to really be present in your day-to-day -day life is going to be reduced. And that's because your body is really stressing it's parasympathetic nervous system. This is your flight or fight stress response. And overtraining syndrome is essentially kind of like an attack on your stress response system. So your body doesn't know what to do because you're overtraining and under recovering. It goes into this flight or fight mode and all of these symptoms get substantially worse. You may even find yourself feeling a little bit depressed and your heart rate gets very, very low, which is the opposite of stage two, because your body just is really just floundering and doesn't know what to do with itself. I could not make these videos without your support. So first, let me say thank you. And this video is brought to you by our very own Performance Training Journal. I have always been in love with hard copy training journals for a few really good reasons. Number one, when I was a new runner and I started keeping an actual training journal like this, I learned so much more about the sport and myself just by that practice. It really forces you to reflect on your training, to think more deeply about what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And if you are constantly reflecting on your training, praising yourself for what's going right, planning for the future, and then looking back on what has previously worked for you, you are gonna really know yourself as a runner. You're gonna start to make wiser decisions about your training. 
I also created this training journal because I want you to focus on the training metrics that actually matter. The training metrics that help you improve, get better and progress with your running. We don't have to focus on everything. We just need to focus on what matters. I also took a lot of inspiration from professional runners that I've talked to on the Strength Running Podcast. They're adamant by completing a training journal and reflecting on what works for you and actually giving yourself some praise within your journal. You're essentially completing a gratitude journal. You are building up your confidence in your own abilities over time. And when you look back on that journal before a big goal race, you are going to be reading in your own words why you're capable, why you could do this. And I can think of nothing more confidence building than an act like that. So I hope you check out the new performance training journal. It is now available on Amazon. It debuted as the number four new release in the running category, and I could not be more proud of it. So thank you again for subscribing to the Strength Running YouTube channel, and I hope you enjoy the Performance Training Journal. Now, the dirty little secret about overtraining syndrome is that it's not really caused by volume. So if you're running a lot, but it's almost entirely easy, you're probably not going to experience any overtraining issues. But if you're doing a lot of intensity, this is where overtraining syndrome can be a problem. So we always want to make sure the intensity side of your training is taken care of because you almost can't get overtrained and succumb to overtraining syndrome if you are not doing really hard workouts. This is the type of work that really stresses your nervous system. It really stresses your endocrine system. And it's just very difficult to get overtraining syndrome without high intensity. So don't worry about overtraining if you're simply running a lot. That is not usually the case. Now, the treatment for overtraining syndrome is a reduction in your workload, in particular, a dramatic reduction in the intensity of your training, or in other words, your hard workouts, your pacing, and in other words, how hard you are running all of your volume. So if you came to me and you said, uh, I've gone to the doctor, they say I may have stage one overtraining syndrome, what should I do, Jason? My advice to you would be, let's cut our volume a little bit just so that you can get some extra rest but let's remove all of the intensity from your training. So we're really not gonna be stressing the nervous system in quite the same ways. We are going to be removing all of your hard workouts. We're gonna be removing even things like strides or hill sprints or hill strides. I just don't want your heart rate to be at an elevated level for any prolonged period of time. The other thing that I might remove from your training as well is any plyometrics, any harder cross training. I would also remove heavier weightlifting from your training. I just want your training easy. And a lot of the times these things like hill strides or lifting heavy weights, or even getting on the bike and doing some higher end aerobic work can be more taxing than just an easy zone two distance run. So I would remove all those things and keep you running a little bit most of the time, just so that you're feeling good you're, you know, getting your legs, spinning your legs every day, but you're not doing anything intense. Now things get a little interesting when you start experiencing more severe forms of overtraining syndrome. So if you've been formally diagnosed by your doctor with overtraining syndrome level two or three, this is where we really just need an elimination of all exercise. We need to give your body real rest. You sort of need to think about the fact that your body is almost like experiencing a marathon. You are really struggling. You're under recovering. You're training too hard. The solution is to rest, just like you just ran a hard marathon. And that kind of a mentality can actually be really beneficial because it forces you to take time off. You're not going to continue to train hard if you just run a marathon nor should we if we've been formally diagnosed with overtraining syndrome. So I would shut down things completely because you can't work your way out of overtraining syndrome. You need to recover your way out of overtraining syndrome. So let's not do any exercise, even cross training. Maybe if you want to go for a very leisurely stroll every day just to get outside, just to get your legs moving, 
but this is not exercise where your heart rate is going to be elevated. This is pure recovery. I want you resting. So even though overtraining syndrome is pretty rare among runners, and unless you're training very intensely, you're doing probably two or three hard workouts a week, and you have a lot of stress from outside in your life coming into your training and really impacting negatively your recovery, you probably don't have overtraining syndrome. You're probably just feeling a little bit run down, maybe a little bit psychologically burned out from training so hard. Maybe you just need to have a recovery week and instead just take a little bit more downtime. But if you have been formally diagnosed, treat it seriously. This is not a situation that you can just grind through. This is not a no pain, no gain type of situation. This is a rest situation. So shut things down, get yourself fully recovered because you're never going to be able to fully adapt to all that hard work you're doing if you're experiencing overtraining syndrome. Now, I interviewed some of the best runners in the world on their favorite recovery strategies so that you don't have to worry about overtraining syndrome, so that you're recovering enough on a daily and weekly basis to make sure that you're getting as much out of your training as possible. Go to strengthrunning.com slash elites and you can download this free guide featuring the favorite recovery strategies from nine elite athletes around the world.